I am about to take on the hardest challenge I have ever done in my entire life. Me and this very not expensive, very not fancy bike are going to try and ride about a thousand kilometers, a little over 600 miles in the next three weeks. Why am I doing this? Because I love the Tour de France. I watch every single stage and each year I try to make it an endurance challenge for myself. Last year I rode 20% of the total miles they raced every single day and that was extremely difficult. So this year I'm going for 30%. Now I'm fitter than most coming into this and I'm I'm an amateur cyclist, I'm nothing special. I wouldn't even say I'm a really good cyclist, I just like it. Most of my fitness comes from everything else I do, like jujitsu, I play hockey once a week, I do a lot of strength training, I do a lot of running, and I ride my bike a lot, but I'm on this little hill right now, and as you can tell, I'm pretty out of breath. It's gonna be a long couple weeks. The hardest part about this challenge will be the time, trying to find time to do all these miles, still train jujitsu on my normal schedule, still do my strength training, and I play hockey once a week. I'd love to ride my bike for three hours a day outside, but it's just not feasible. And the trainer inside gives you the flexibility to do a little bit, work a little bit, do a little bit, work a little bit, because time is kind of at a premium. Another downside to riding outside is you gotta look like a dork. So can I do it? Can I survive the hardest sporting event in the world? At least 30% of it. Well, we're about to find out because the race starts tomorrow. So if you have not already, this seems like a good time to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments how you think I'll get on and let's get at it. All right, here we go. It is about 5.30 in the morning on day one, which is much earlier than I usually care to wake up, but it's for a good reason. Super excited to start the challenge. I've got about 60 kilometers to do today, and I think prior to this, my longest ride ever was like 50, and I've got to do 60 today, 60 tomorrow, 60 on Monday, and tomorrow I have a hockey game to play as well. So it's going to be a big weekend, just trying to get through this and make it to Tuesday when I think I have like 30 kilometers to do, but I also have jujitsu that night. So that's going to be the whole point of this video. Can I do it all? 60 kilometers to go, let's crack on. I obviously checked the weather last night when it's supposed to be clear skies, but right now it's all gray skies and starting to feel raindrops. Might have to split this day into two and finish this ride, get home, and then do the back half on the indoor trainer. Hopefully the weather holds off once we get there. All right, I got day one done outside. I beat the rain for the most part, got a little bit wet. So I'm gonna finish this up the last couple Ks tonight while I watch UFC 303 on the trainer inside. So day one, feeling pretty good on to day two. I'm about halfway through day two. Got 60 kilometers today, I'm halfway through it. Rained a lot last night, so it's super humid, trying to stay hydrated and also trying not to fall down on the wet roads because I have a hockey game tonight, which I'm sort of nervous about. So I did a lot of mileage the last two days. I have to skate a lot tonight. But I'm just trying to compartmentalize, just focus on the miles ahead, and then we'll get to the game later. I absolutely hate this stretch because it's just uphill enough that it bites your legs, but it looks flat. It shouldn't be hard. And it's always right towards the end of the ride because our house is over here. Super annoying. How are you feeling after two days? Better than I thought. It's not calm. Uh, legs are like super tired, obviously, but I still feel like I can move a little bit, so we'll see if that keeps up for the rest of the game. So hockey went pretty good yesterday. I feel very tired, my legs feel very depleted, and it is time for the longest ride of the tour. So let me get changed real quick and then we'll talk about it. So it's not ideal to have to ride inside for the longest ride of the tour because it's pretty boring. Even with Zwift going, it can be a little boring on the indoor trainer, but my wife already had plans to go out for dinner with my sister-in-law. I'm taking care of the kids tonight and they just went to bed, which means I can't go outside and ride my bike for three hours. So I will be inside, but it is what it is. But since we have some time, I figured I would tell you about some of the numbers that I'm tracking during this whole challenge for the next three weeks. If you're familiar with Whoop and how they have like the recovery score, I wear a Garmin watch and they have what's called body battery. And it's basically the same thing. The closer you are to 100, the more prepared you are for a workout or for activity or competition. So I expect over the next three weeks, my body battery will be really low all the time with all the stuff that I'm doing. 
Another thing that I'm gonna be using is on Strava, they also use your heart rate data and your power from the, the bike ride and all the other activities you do because I always wear my heart rate monitor when I'm playing hockey and I don't wear it during jujitsu because it's kind of in the way, but just based off of like the effort of how much I input to Strava about how hard the training was. Strava will measure your fitness based off of your heart rate and the power and all that, but they will also measure your fatigue and how much that activity and exercise is worn on your body. They also have a fancy number called form where they basically take the difference of the, your fitness and your fatigue to show you your form, which is basically, again, like the body battery, how prepared you are for competition. And they have over here on the side, you can see where it basically is like, if you do no more activity whatsoever for the next couple of days, this is where you can expect your numbers to go. Now over the next three weeks, there's not gonna be many days where I don't do any activity. So again, I'm expecting my fitness to go way up on this graph and my fatigue to also go way up, which means my form will go way down. Now, like I said, this is gonna be the longest day of the tour, and I've kind of just circled this one as like a get through it. I think the next couple days are a little bit shorter. I have jujitsu tomorrow night, but if I can get through this, the next couple days will be a little bit shorter. Even with jujitsu and strength training, it'll be a little bit more manageable than these first three days. So here comes a montage of me finishing this day and a few of the days in the future. So cue the montage. Today is the 4th of July. It's a day I usually train jiu-jitsu, but I'm not training jiu-jitsu because it's the 4th of July. So I thought I would do like a later ride today, maybe ride under some fireworks. And instead, all I see is a bunch of gray sky. So I'm trying to get in the 50K I'm supposed to do today before I get rained on. If I start getting rained on, I'm just bailing out and I'll add the mileage to tomorrow. But happy 4th of July, America. Had to audible the route to try to hide underneath these trees on the way back because it is raining pretty hard. Not sure if you can hear it or hear the fireworks going, but I am caught in the rain and I'm hiding in the trees. If you can see me, I've been avoiding this climb because it's right up the back side of my house. I'll be home in one minute when I get to the top of this climb, but it is fucking brutal. having a banana for a snack on the ride today. Last night was pretty terrible. Uh, my feet are still wet because my shoes never dried and I'm riding now, so they're wet again. But today should have been the shortest day of the race for me because today was a time trial and I really only had to do like seven and a half K today. So I'm just gonna add on the mileage I missed yesterday onto today. So today will probably be the longest day of the whole challenge for me. Had to wait for that car to drive by. I've been feeling pretty good. This is my Strava fitness and freshness, which actually looks better than I expected at this point. And this is my body battery from Garmin. It got pretty low a couple days, but I've been doing a good job of getting enough sleep and trying to recover. So it's shot back up pretty quickly. Overall, I feel pretty good. Um, I have a strength training session later today, rides this weekend and then hockey on Sunday. So we're gonna queue to a montage and I'll pick it up at hockey.
in the jungle. Can you take a video of me? Now move your finger so you can see me on the screen. I can see you. I feel very fucking tired. My legs are burning. We got one period left in this hockey game. I'm gonna to try to survive. Tomorrow is the rest day, so I'll probably just hit a strength session to keep moving a little bit, but I'm ready for the rest day. Ah, fuck. Ow, that hurt. Oh, oh no. Oh, fuck, that hurt. Ah. Dude, that one hit me right in the top of the foot and it fucking hurts. Fuck. I saw when you went down there. Oh, huh? I saw the way you it went hit down there. the top it. of it my didn't foot. Feel good. I was a little worried that I broke my foot because it hurt really bad and it's happened before, but it feels fine now. I feel pretty fresh after the rest day. So for some of my miles today, I'm going to do a race on Zwift because that's more fun than just pedaling away to nowhere inside. I'm going to do a race. So let's see how it goes. Start for these races is always the hardest part because everyone goes out super, super hard. So I just got to try to stay with the bunch as long as I can. Try not to get dropped in the first like 1K. All right, here we go. The audio is bad, sorry, I got two fans going right now because it's already really hot down here and I'm already sweating. All right, let's see if we can stay with these guys. It's three laps of this course and there's like a little tough little climb that we just got done, which is why I'm so out of breath, where I think in the next lap, a few people will drop off on that climb. I'm gonna try not to be one of them. And then in the third lap, whoever's gonna win the race is just gonna go on that climb and just stay away to the end. It will not be me. As soon as we hit that up in the climb the first time on this lap, I realized my legs are not as fresh as maybe as I thought they were after the rest day, but I'm just gonna try to stay to hang on to this group as long as I can and not get dropped. This climb right here, that dude's way out in front of us. He's gonna win, but I just gotta try to stay with this group if I can, but my legs are on fire. This is gonna be tough. Just try not to get dropped here. And there they all go. Close the gap, I see. Almost 400 watts. It's too many watts for tired legs. Uh, they're like right there, but I just can't catch up. Oh man, that sucks. Uh, and it was eight seconds in like less than a kilometer. Uh, all right, well, my race is pretty well done. So I'm just gonna finish this thing out. So I'm not catching them back. And off to jujitsu in a little bit. So I have to be back inside riding today because it's raining. I'm hoping it stops raining so maybe I can do the back half of this ride outside. But because I am riding inside today, it means I get to do one of my favorite things in July, which is ride my bike while I watch the race at the same time. Lots of miles to do today because it's a longer stage, so let's crack on. I am absolutely exhausted after that training. I think these rides are burning so many calories. I just don't have the energy to feel good when I'm training. I definitely shouldn't do this all the time because it's affecting my main sport, which is jujitsu, but that's why this is a challenge to see if I can survive. These numbers make sense. I feel dead. 
I was hoping for some outside miles today because pretty down after having a hard training last night and feeling beat up by all these mileage and this is what I see instead. So I admit that I'm feeling pretty beat down. Um, the miles are taking their toll on my legs, obviously, and I'm feeling like physically drained, but mentally being inside on the trainer in one position, as much fun as it is to watch things while I ride, it's wearing on me. It's also gonna rain tomorrow at the only time I have available to ride. So I have at least two days in a row now inside riding. So it is wearing on me, but I guess that's why they call it a challenge and just have to keep going. Uh, oh my fucking legs. So this does say rest day up here and I'm obviously on the bike riding and that's because I'm behind on miles. I was supposed to do like 60k yesterday but then I also had hockey and just the way the day shook out I got about half the miles done then I had to go play hockey and I had the intention of coming home and finishing the miles and I, I just couldn't do it. I was too exhausted. My legs hurt too bad. I just couldn't get it done. And I knew I had the rest day today so I'm going to try to make up some of those miles that I'm missing. I was very much looking forward to the rest day and I was very much looking forward to doing outside rides. But because today's a work day, I'm gonna have to do that thing where I pedal a little bit, hop off, do some work, pedal a little bit, hop off, do some work and just try to catch up on miles that I'm missing. So no real rest day for me, that's okay. Back to the miles. to do an intro for this ride but I literally hopped on the bike 30 seconds before the race started and by the time I got the camera set up and everything it was just a sprint out of the gate but things have kind of settled down now I'm in this group there's like three people ahead of us who are almost a minute ahead they're not coming back so the goal is just to stay with this group as long as possible hopefully don't get dropped and hopefully do better than the last race let's see how it goes I think I know this course I think it's mostly flat compared to the finish line. I really hope it is. I'm not a great sprinter, but I'm a worse climber. So if I can stay with the bunch to the last couple K, maybe make an attack and try to like, you know, quote unquote win out of this group, be the first loser out of this group. But let's see what happens. All right, so about four and a half K left. Same situation. Our group's mostly together. Pace is starting to come up a little bit, so we're stretching out a little bit here. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to soften them up a little bit. I'm gonna do tiny little accelerations like right now. Start going out in front, make them chase me back. I'm not putting out a ton of effort. As they close the gap and get back down again, I'll repeat the process a few times, make them work for it. Raise again, soften them up. Because if we just come to the line like this as a group, I can't win a sprint out of this. I gotta make them work for it a little bit in the lead up. And I'll still probably lose. As soon as I see him again, I gotta go. 
I don't think I'm done. I don't think I'm toasted. Go again. I only got two seconds. Two seconds, two kilometers left. I don't want to roll off the kick again. But I don't want to go too early and roll it out. So I'd like to kick and just keep high power the rest of the way to the line. My gap is going up. Four second lead on the two behind me. Their power is still below mine. So it should be tough for them to catch me. I think once I hit 1K left, I'm going to kick again. Just try to ride that through the line. Here we go. Last little bit I have. That's it, holds them off. I think I got it. Six second lead. 200 meters to go. He's trying. I'm trying to catch. I think I got it. Strategy worked. I wouldn't beat those dudes in a lot spring. I had to try some tactics to soften them up, go the lead and hold them off, rather than try to sprint them. Fifth place isn't too bad. Certain other guys were way ahead. About 20K that way is my house and the end of this challenge. And that makes me very, very sad. Not just because the tour is over and I love watching the tour, but I've also really, really loved this challenge. I've loved this challenge every year that I've done it. This year was no different. And it was very, very hard as these numbers show. And that's why I liked it because it was so, so difficult. It definitely made my jujitsu training worse. It definitely made me a worse hockey player, which is kind of a low bar because I'm not a very good hockey player to start with. Ow. And it also affected my strength training, which you might notice from the video, I didn't really do much of in the last couple weeks because my body just couldn't take it. I'm looking for something to do next now because this challenge was so much fun and I don't want to wait a year to do the 40% challenge. So let me know in the comments what you want to see me do next. I will put some stats on screen as I bring it home, but thanks so much for coming along for the literal ride and I will see you in the next video. 23 days of rides. I still hate this little bit. Up towards the house, it's a false flat. It's actually a climb, and I hate it. Well, that's it, challenge done. I loved it, I hate that's over. Thanks for watching.